Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey, one good vibrations. A while ago I made a video entitled Huge Horizontal Loop Antenna. If you go to the search uh, portion of my channel, not the general YouTube search box, but the search box specific to my channel and just type in huge horizontal loop antenna uh, you should come right to that video and one of the comments in that video asks a very interesting question what is the feed point impedance of a large loop antenna well this is not just a large loop this is a huge loop. A single wavelength circumference loop antenna in free space has a uh, purely resistive feed point impedance of about 100 ohms and it forms the basis of course for the well-known quad antenna but if you add parasitic elements that uh, feed point impedance will decrease. Uh, two wavelengths, probably something similar. But if you have, say, two and a half wavelengths, the, resist, uh, the impedance at the feed point is going to be purely resistive, but very low. So the, it's going to depend on the frequency. And if you make a huge loop antenna such as the one I describe in the video a hundred wavelengths or more in circumference uh, you, you'd have to have a lot of real estate and a lot of a lot of money for good wire to do that I recommend you watch that video first uh, before you watch this one uh, and then I'll try to answer that question the comment will appear in that video what is the feed point impedance of a large loop antenna? Well, when you have a loop that big, a very small change in frequency will produce a dramatic change in the feed point impedance because there are so many current loops and nodes going around the antenna, a hundred wavelengths in circumference. Uh, just if you're at a current loop that is a current maximum you're going to get uh, a relatively low uh, feed point impedance purely resistive change the frequency just a little bit and you'll end up at a current node or a voltage loop and you'll get a, a high uh, impedance probably oh not terribly high anywhere from 70 to 100 ohms. As the size of the loop increases, uh, those maxima and minimum uh, impedance numbers will converge, I, I think, but I'm not sure. But the point of uh, such a large loop antenna of this sort is not to get a good impedance match. You, you're not even supposed to care about that, and that's why you use open wire feed line, low loss open wire line, so that the the input impedance, whether it has reactants or not, or whether the resistive component is high or low, isn't going to matter. Uh, you're going to be able to tune the impedance at the transmitter end of the feed line with a truly balanced transmatch and, and that transmatch should be designed for purely balanced uh, output and such a transmatch is manufactured by a company called Palstar and that's uh, the contemporary version uh, is what I recommend you're going to spend a lot of money for that too but it would be money well spent if you're serious about an antenna like this if you have the real estate for crying out loud for a hundred wavelength circumference antenna you're certainly going to have the wherewithal to purchase a pal star papa alpha lima sierra 
Tango, Alpha, Romeo, Palstar, truly balanced antenna. Doesn't use a ballon at the output to mimic the effects of a balanced output. It, it really has a balanced tuning system in it. Now that's the only way to go in my opinion if you really want to tune balanced open wire line. There may be certain frequencies at which you have difficulty getting a match because the uh, reactance is too great or perhaps because the resistive component of the impedance is too low. But I think the PAL star transmatch can probably cover that and if it can't you can just add a little bit more feed line or take away a little bit or change the frequency slightly. Uh, but what is the impedance at the feed point of a large loop like that? The whole point is it's not supposed to matter. It's practically impossible to predict because it changes so quickly as you change the frequency. It's just it's a variable that's more or less you should regard it as beyond your control whether the far end is grounded or not and I, I would absolutely recommend grounding the far end of that loop antenna as I explain in the video so that electrostatic charge buildup doesn't become exceedingly great. Yeah, I believe I specify a height of at least a half a wavelength above effective ground, so we are talking about a massive antenna, more than most of you can afford either space-wise or financially, but maybe a few of you can, and if you can, I think it would be fun to try. But forget about the input feed point impedance. Worry about the transmatch at the station end of the open wire transmission line and make sure that it is low loss line, say space, then this is an HF antenna and also for 160 meters, 160 through 10 meter antenna, say. Uh, four inches uh, feed, uh, feed line conductor spacing should be adequate. Uh, as I as I mentioned in the video, the wires, both of the antenna and the feed line, should be as heavy gauge as you can manage, and take it from there. Just consider it a random, gigantic loop antenna. R G L A Romeo Golf Lima Alpha antenna. Uh, or well, that that's redundant. RLGA. But my call sign is W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations. I will now say 73, which means best regards and so long, which, regardless of the antenna type, regardless of the impedance, regardless of all other factors, in my native fist, does now and shall forever after translate to da 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 da.